Hi, Jen. Hi, Angie. Hey, how are you, Janice? Good. I meant Good. to email you. I We have our website up and the application up. Oh, okay. It's Friday's the due date. Did you get my email? I can, I'll message you. Okay. Okay. Hi, Jen. How are you? Good. I, I just thought I'd jump on to see what it was about so I could bring it back to my staff. So oh, sure. if, if I'm the, if I end up to be the only one here, <laughs> you might, we never know this. <laughs> sometimes we have a huge turnout. Sometimes we have a really small turnout. So we'll, we'll see. If, if we have a small turnout, then we'll just chit chat for <laughs> amongst the, amongst the four of us.
All right. Hey, everyone. It is 4.01. We're just going to give it a few more minutes, um, just a couple more minutes to see uh, if anybody shows up and then we'll get started. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Kate Weber and I am CEC's membership director. Also here is Jenneth Johnson, CEC's chief engagement officer who will also be talking about a couple of our programs. Um, just before we begin, just a couple of housekeeping items. For those that need closed captioning, there is a button at the bottom of your screen that allows for live captions. You'll also see a chat window at the bottom of your screen, so feel free to ask any questions during the presentation and we'll do our best to address them. Also take a minute to make sure that your microphone is on mute and there will be a few times that you'll be able to unmute and ask questions. So with those items out of the way, let's get started. So today you'll have the opportunity to meet CEC's president, Dr. Angie Jasper. She'll share a brief overview of the history and mission of CEC and talk a little bit more about where the organization is headed. Next, we'll go over some of the membership benefits that you can access immediately, along with tools and resources and ways that you can volunteer with CEC. Then we'll wrap up with some Q&A and do a few live demonstrations on how to access resources on the CEC website. So with that, I will turn it over to Angie. Good afternoon and hello everyone. I know you're probably wondering, I hope you can see, I have on my uh, Mrs. Claus uh, outfit today, just a little bit of a um, holiday spirit, but um, just wanting to talk with you all a little bit about, thank you, Jen, about um, CEC and um, thank you to you, Kate, for introducing me 
And I'm really excited to see um, you all here so that you can learn a little more about your uh, membership and how it can be useful to you. And I want to start by saying that um, your commitment to um, CEC and your commitment to um, our field is um, very much appreciated and you all are very valuable to us. So we thank you um, for being here. One of the messages that I, I like to reiterate when I am talking with uh, members is that, you know, the work that CEC does, we cannot do it without you all. And so you all are just coming on board and getting um, some additional information that can help you think about your path of involvement and engagement with CEC. And so I really am looking forward to that. So I, I hope that you find your time um, today to be helpful and that you learn a lot of, of great information. So <clears throat> let me tell you a little bit about um, the Council for Exceptional Children. So CEC was organized by a group of um, educators actually who were attending a summer session at the Teachers College at um, Columbia University. And um, we just celebrated, uh, well actually we're at 101 years um, now in um, just on August of 2022, the 10th actually. Um, and so on this slide, you see a picture of the woman standing. That's uh, Elizabeth Farrell, and she was a part of the group of educators who um, attended uh, Columbia University, and she is the reason that CEC exists. She had a heart for students with disabilities. Um, in fact, she was the first president of, of CEC, and she was the first individual to teach a classroom of students with disabilities in um, United, in a United States public school. And so she was really influential um, outside of the box in her thinking and someone I admire because she was very passionate and committed to ensuring that students with disabilities had access to um, an education. So CEC is the largest international professional organization. We are dedicated to improving the success of children and youth with disabilities um, and or gifts and talents. And we currently have over 20,000 members and uh, 57 countries. So our reach is very, very broad. We're known as the source of information for um, the term we use education professionals to uh, a broad term to capture all of those who um, interact and support students with disabilities on a regular basis. Uh, we advocate for uh, you all as education professionals and I'll talk a little bit on the next slide about um, our membership, but that includes everyone. So special educators, general educators, admin, related service provi providers, um, faculty in higher ed, paraprofessionals, um, all of the individuals who support students with um, disabilities, gifts, talents, they have a home here at CEC. And so we also maintain legislative priorities. We have a, a pretty significant footprint on the Hill, which I'm excited about. Uh, we have someone who is our um, advocacy and policy advisor who is on um, Capitol Hill almost every day, engaging with legislators and advocating for um, appropriate uh, policies that support um, students with disabilities, that support publicly funded education. And so that's where um, much of our work related to advocacy occurs. And then we also have um, an arm or a branch in which we focus on professional standards. And so we set the standards related to um, uh, educator preparation programs to inform those programs. We also work on um, accreditation and credentialing um, organizations and agencies. And so the, the neat thing about our standards and um, we, we can go onto the website and share that information, but they outline um, the knowledge and the skills that uh, special educators should possess. And we also have um, standards that outline um, ethical principles that we should be um, following that guide our practice to ensure that we are doing our best to support students who have disabilities. And then finally, uh, the last uh, box that you see down there is related to continuing education. We are what I like to call the go-to resource for uh, practical um, uh, evidence-based um, resources, materials. And um, our goal is really to provide you with the resources, support necessary to help you um, 
you know, be effective in your in your roles. And so we have some resources that are more kind of um, empirical, scholarly um, in nature. And then we have some that are more practical that you can apply um, immediately. And so we try to create um, and develop our resources in such a way that they can meet the needs of multiple um, groups of people. Uh, and so um, I guess what I'm trying to communicate to you with this slide is that we um, are happy that you all are here, that we value you. Um, CEC, we try really hard to be responsive to the needs of our members. We work to identify what those needs are and then um, try to develop uh, support and resources to, to address those needs. You can move to the next slide, Kate. Thank you. So I was just referencing um, the term education professionals. And again, we use that broadly because our membership is represented by a whole uh, gamut of individuals so that you can see um, on this slide, we represent all areas of special education. And I think that is one of the great things about us and the work that we do. We are a very um, diverse group of in individuals who have a shared uh, passion and commitment for um, supporting students with disabilities and um, or gifts or talents. And so that's what brings us all um, together. So you can see on this slide, we are um, undergraduate students, graduate students, um, special educators, general educators, parents, family members, um, special, um, specialized um, instructional support personnel. We have faculty, higher ed faculty, building administrators, paraprofessionals. Um, I think about like occupational therapists. There are all types of um, people who are who are members of CEC. We also have um, individuals who are retirees, retired professionals who still seek to be involved with CEC and um, are passionate about the work and want to make contributions as they can. So again, we run the gamut. We're kind of um, all over in terms of our, our roles. We have a very diverse membership, but as I, I mentioned, we are unique, but we all have a shared commitment and a passion to ensuring um, you know, that we're supporting students with disabilities. And so uh, you all as new members are now a part of the, the CEC family. And so to you, I say, welcome. You can move to the next slide, Kate. Okay, so this slide, I just wanna talk a little bit about um, who CEC is, who we are. We are a committed and dedicated, and I would argue passionate, uh, group of individuals who are um, working to support our profession. And so on this slide, you see that we have our, our vision and our mission, which reflects our passion and our commitment. And our uh, vision, you can see it's laser focused on providing high quality education that is inclusive and equitable for individuals with disabilities. Um, and that's our hope, that's our, our desire, that's what we're striving toward. And we want to support the development of high quality education that's inclusive and equitable because that's what we believe um, individuals with disabilities deserve. And so that's why we're working toward that. And then our guiding mission um, is helping us to achieve our vision. And it's focused on cultivating, supporting, empowering education professionals who work with um, students with disabilities. And we do this in a few ways. I've already talked with you on the previous slide about the advocacy piece, the professional um, standards, but a, a few other things that we do that I, I haven't highlighted yet is um, promoting diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. We have integrated that into our strategic plan it's at the forefront of our minds um, and all of the decisions that we make and all the work that we do. And that includes our um, public uh, forward-facing work as, uh, as well as our internal um, policies and practices. And so we're trying to be very intentional, intentional excuse me, about ensuring that we are um, promoting DEIA within our work. And then the other um, a kind of piece of work that we do that's critically important is uh, related to building networks and um, establishing um, partnerships and engaging with the community. At CEC, we realize that the work that we do cannot be done in a silo, that we um, are, are um, 
it, it's our responsibility to engage with other um, organizations who have a similar kind of commitment to supporting um, students, to supporting education, so that we can ensure that we are providing resources that address the needs um, of the whole um, child, thinking about all aspects of you all as education professionals and all the work that you do. So we don't wanna focus on just one piece, one area. We realize that we can um, meet the needs of, um, uh, better meet the needs of our members if we are collaborating and engaging in partnerships with other organizations that are doing similar work. And so we have an intentional focus um, on doing that as well. And you can move to the next slide, Kate. Okay, I always get excited about this um, slide because it talks about our, um, our strategic plan which rolled out in uh, uh, 2022, actually. Yes, so last year at CEC, last year, which was in Orlando. And uh, I'm excited about this because this is the evidence that we strive to be responsive to the needs um, of, of our members and we, try, we strive to be responsive to um, the needs of the field. And we want to ensure that the work we do is um, relevant and in line, aligned with those needs. And the strategic plan is our evidence of that. It's guiding our work. And so it outlines some specific goals and objectives that operationalize that mission that I just talked about. And I'm very serious when I say it guides all of the work that we do. Every decision that we make is aligned with the strategic plan because we believe um, so strongly in, um, in the work that we're doing. And so, um, this plan was developed in collaboration with a lot of people. We sought uh, the insight of a variety of um, stakeholders, including our, our membership, um, CEC staff, um, wanting to get everyone's thoughts about where they see CEC uh, moving in the next five years. And so we are going to um, watch a quick video that gives you a brief overview of the plan and um, outlines some of the, the goals that we were determined were a priority for our organization um, as we are moving forward. You can play the video, Kate. Kate, I don't hear the um, sound. You may have to click the optimize button before you um, share it. With individuals with disabilities every day. And as our world continues to change and evolve, the Council for Exceptional Children cultivates, supports, and empowers the professionals who work with individuals with disabilities every day. And as our world continues to change and evolve, CEC is responding with new priorities that are responsive to the field and inclusive of our entire community of diverse educational professionals and the students they serve. Over the past 10 months, thousands of CEC members contributed to our vision of creating high quality education that is inclusive and equitable for individuals with disabilities. After more than 15 focus groups and 20 hours of deliberations, the Board of Directors focused on developing a strategy to push CEC forward. And we have identified four goals. We will develop and support an effective and diverse workforce of special education professionals. We will intentionally embed diversity, equity, inclusivity, and accessibility within CEC. We will increase the impact of CEC's policy agenda for education professionals and individuals with disabilities and or gifts and talents. And we will establish CEC as a globally recognized leader in the field of special education. This plan is about you, the professionals who serve our students every day. 
It's about celebrating your professionalism and dedication and making sure you have the resources you need. It identifies vital priorities in the field and elevates them to the highest ranks of our work, such as addressing personnel shortages and ensuring that our community is equipped to serve a diverse body of students. It continues our legacy of work, such as our hard-fought advocacy efforts and our commitment to being an inclusive organization. With each step we took, we gathered input and reviewed our drafts to ask the important question of, is everyone included? After all, it is you who is making a difference for our students each and every day. At CEC, we believe that if we want to go forward, we must go forward together. And with your help, we are proud and excited to begin our important work that will help us evolve as we dive into our second century by moving forward together. Thank you, Kate. So um, this is really what we are about, moving forward together. And as I mentioned before, we can't do the work that we do without our members. So again, I thank you um, first and foremost for joining CEC, and then thank you for taking the time to be part of this, uh, you know, this webinar today. You can see that we have a very rich uh, history, 100 and year, 101 years um, and counting, and we have a, a future that is very bright. Another thing that I always say is that, you know, it's a, a great time to be a CEC member. We have so many uh, exciting things uh, going on and lots of wonderful things on the horizon uh, to ensure that we are an organization that is um, really, truly um, walking out our, our vision and our mission. And so um, I look forward to you all and your future participation in our convention that's coming up and uh, as well as other efforts or initiatives that we, we have going on at CEC. And so um, again, I thank you for your time and look forward to hearing about the rest of um, your membership benefits. Thank you, Kate. All right, thank you, Angie. All right, so let's get into the nuts and bolts of it a little bit. Um, the first step in activating your CEC membership is to visit your membership profile. Uh, the profile is set up similar to what you might find on other sites, but there are a few items to be mindful of. So here you can update your basic contact details. Let us know if you have a second email address and you can also provide your phone number. You also have the option to adjust your opt-in and opt-out preferences on the right-hand side under account actions. Next, you'll want to visit the membership information section. This is where you can view things like the type of membership, join and renewal dates, and the CEC unit that you're assigned to. You can even add additional years to your membership, or if you choose to join a special interest division, here's where you would go to add that to your membership. Account Actions is the section you'll want to know about. This is where you can update your address, your contact information, update your demographics, edit your opt-ins and opt-outs, change your username, and reset your password. Next is the demographic information section. This is important because knowing more about you as a professional will help us tailor your membership experience to suit your needs. To update this information, select demographics from the account actions menu. You can let us know things like your professional role, your employment setting, and even the age level you serve. Just a quick note, uh, CEC takes your privacy, your privacy seriously. So if there's a question you don't wanna answer, simply select I'd rather not say or other in this section. And then finally, if you have any open invoices or just need to pay a balance, you can find this in your historical transaction information under the recent orders section of the website. You can view previous receipts and invoices in this area as well. The next step in activating your CEC membership is to visit the member benefits overview page of our website. You can go there by going to exceptionalchildren.org benefits. 
Here you'll find a comprehensive listing of all your member benefits as well as who to contact with any questions. Here you'll see information about connecting with others, steps for accessing our resources and tools, understanding your professional development hours, and several other benefits that you can access. CEC has a few options for you to connect with your peers across the country and abroad to ask questions, share tips, and get advice. CEC's community is our private, online, peer-to-peer -peer professional community for CEC members. This is where you can ask your peers questions, see what the latest discussions are on a particular topic, and find where members can share resources. We have a variety of communities, including those just for students and for units and divisions. Also, I wanna mention that getting involved in your local CEC unit is a great way to get involved with CEC. Many local and regional units have events, networking and opportunities that are specific and unique to your local area. And we'll share a bit more about that later. The link to CEC's community is located on the Member Benefits Overview page of our website and at the very top of our homepage. All CEC members are automatically added to the All Member Forum, where you can ask questions, read responses to discussion threads, and see different resources. You can get there using the blue bar at the top of our website. Once you're logged into the CEC community, you'll see your profile in the top right corner. This is where you can check your settings to see what communities you're subscribed to. You'll have the option to receive a daily digest or you can have the option to receive them immediately as they are posted. Please be sure to check that CEC is a safe sender from your email provider. One other thing I like to point out is the membership directory. Here you can search all CEC members by name and location, and the advanced search includes an option to search members by the age level they serve, educational setting, and area of professional interest. Here you'll see a screenshot of what a discussion thread looks like. You'll have the ability to reply privately or reply all to the thread. Reply all will go to everyone who is subscribed to that thread, so make sure you pay close attention to this. I've also included some of the more recent topics in the community, highlighting the types of content you can find throughout the all member forum. This truly is a supportive community based on shared knowledge and a passion for special education. So with that, I will go ahead and pause and see if there are any questions. All right, moving on. Hi everyone, we're gonna talk a little bit about some other ways to connect with others through CEC's in-person events. So um, the, the CEC Convention and Expo is an opportunity to connect with thousands of your fellow special educators through sessions, networking, events, and much more. Registration for the convention is now open and if you're interested in attending, you can actually read, consider registering for the in-person plus rate, which gives you your registration to the convention in person and the virtual option. In addition, you'll actually get a ticket for our CEC celebration with that package. So the all of the program and information, the schedule at a glance is on the website now. So I hope um, you consider that. And if you're interested in bringing a group of five or more, perhaps some of your classmates or colleagues, you can take advantage of the group membership rate, which gives you a special rate that, um, that we offer for groups of five or more. And when we're talking about in-person events, don't forget that there are also events on your local um, and your regional level. On the CEC website at the very top, there's a, a button that says events. You can click that and see other ways that you can attend other um, conferences or conventions that are hosted by um, some of our special interest divisions or some other related organizations. So we talked about um, 
other some of our special interest divisions. And so another way that you can take advantage of your CEC membership is to get involved with your local CEC unit. So units are state or provincial level organizations that bring CEC members together in your local area. Units have events, news updates, net, net, um, news updates, networking, and other opportunities. Um, but best of all, your membership to your state or provincial level unit is complimentary. So be sure to check out your local um, unit for offerings on their website about ways to volunteer, ways to get involved and attend um, and get involved in some of their opportunities. So you also have an opportunity with your membership to connect with colleagues around a common topic. There are 18 special interest divisions that you can join as part of your membership. Now, when you're a part of a CEC special interest division, you're a part of a really engaged uh, community of professionals who are really passionate about a topic of interest in special education. Um, so an example of that, my background is I'm a speech language pathologist by training. I have a, um, a, a, a professional interest in the Division for Communication Disorders, and then I also have an, a, another professional interest in um, research. So um, as you can see on the screen there, there are um, a variety of topics, and we also you see case at the top. So that's an opportunity for administrators who would want to be um, who would want to connect with other administrators in another state. And with case, there are also subdivisions of case. So there are some that are within their state. There's Missouri case and there's Texas case. So that's really an opportunity to kind of just get involved on a more state level or local level within that special interest division. Let's see. So here are the list of the 18 special interest divisions that we offer. As you can see, we have a division for almost every area of practice, and there are many opportunities to take a deep dive in a particular topic through one or more of these divisions. One thing I should mention is that each division sets their own pricing, and you can see on the website and in your member profile that they often offer a discount for students to join. And um, I think now we'll talk a little bit more. Oh, okay. So here, to join a division, you'll start the special interest division webpage. And if you're clicking there, um, you can find a comprehensive list of all the divisions along with a description of their work, a link to their website and their contact person. If you have any questions, we wanna make sure that you can directly access these divisions to find the ones that fit you best. And then you can add a division by visiting your member profile and clicking that red button at the top that says renew memberships slash add divisions. From here, you can select the division or divisions that interest you and join at prorated rates through your membership profile. So just one thing to note is that you should click the yellow checkbox on your screen and that will give you only division rates and you won't be asked to renew your membership just yet. Does anyone have any questions about um, joining your local unit or special interest division or perhaps even the convention? Not seeing anything in the chat, but if you do, just let us know. Kate, I'll turn things back to you. Great. Thank you, Jenna. All right. So um, learning with CEC is a great way to keep up with your professional development hours. The best way to get started is through our learning library. And in this library, you can view on-demand courses, programs, and topic-based webinars, or sign up for live webinars that will help improve your practice and be in the know about the most current research and instructional strategies. There are over 150 on-demand webinars connected to over 100 topics to enhance your special education career. 
Next up, we have two professional journals. The, uh, one is called Teaching Exceptional Children and the other one is called Exceptional Children. Whoops, sorry. Just one minute. Okay, so Teaching Exceptional Children is a research to practice journal and it's intended to share knowledge and new information with you on a bi-monthly basis. The information you get in those journals will help you put into practice new techniques and mechanisms to keep your work moving forward. The other journal is called Exceptional Children, which is our quarterly empirical science research journal that takes a deep dive into research around special education. In this journal, you can learn more about emerging research and guidance that will help you stay ahead of the trends. Both of these publications are included with your membership. One thing to note is that because of the timing of these journals, you might not receive them right away. If you don't receive them soon, you can always access them digitally at any time by logging into your profile and then exploring the journals. If you're just in the mood to browse resources based on a particular topic, you can view our list of topic-based resources quickly on our website. Just, ho just hover over the Explore tab and a list of topics will pop up for you. You can also search for material by clicking all topics or by searching using the search bar. These topics are carefully curated to ensure that you receive the most comprehensive list of information based on your search. We include all resources, including webinars, journals, and other tools. You can also access a collection of resources through CEC's Exceptional Teacher Resource Repository. This is a database of peer-reviewed resources for CEC members to use in their classrooms. All resources published in the repository are peer-reviewed by fellow teachers to ensure that we're highlighting exceptionally useful resources created by educators. You can find these resources by going to our website and hovering over improving your practice and then under tools and resources. More tools and resources are being added all the time and we're always looking for great resources to share with fellow educators as well. If you're interested in submitting a resource, you can do that on this page as well and we encourage your participation. Our Life-Centered Education Transition Curriculum, also known as LCE, is an all-in-one set of over 1,200 transition lesson plans with related tests and other tools and resources. Perfectly suited for classroom as well as extended school instruction, this ready-made collection of online lesson plans prepares students to be productive adults, leading happy and healthy lives with gainful employment. A perfect candidate for your materials and supplies budget, the LCE program includes three built-in assessment options and progress tracking for IEP needs. One thing to keep in mind is that this tool is also an additional fee. So if you're interested to learn more, you can visit our website and you can even request a free trial while you're there to explore this important program and all of its uses. And then speaking of tools and resources, don't forget to stop by the CEC store where you can find a wealth of additional items for purchase. You can get there by hovering over and improving your practice, then store or by using the blue bar at the top of our website. From books to laminated guides, this is where you can find it all. These publications will, will help you gain knowledge and do your job better by keeping you up to date on industry knowledge and best practices. A major benefit of CEC membership is that you receive discounts on book purchases from list price. For example, our book on high leverage practices has an exclusive discount just for members. CEC also offers bulk sales discounts with significant savings. So if there are books in our store that you think your district will benefit from, consider taking advantage of this opportunity. Another way to get engaged is through our policy and advocacy programs. You can check out what we're advocating for in Washington, as well as how you can help influence legislation for the special education population we serve. This is where you can help us push special education forward in addition to what we're already doing for you on Capitol Hill every day. You can see our federal policy agenda, position statements, and even learn how to become an advocate. And while you're there, be sure to check out the Legislative Action Center, where you can lend your voice to, to a variety of subjects and topics. All you need to do is select a topic, add your name, and hit send to let your legislatures know that you have a special interest in these topics and want to see change. 
Finally, to stay on top of federal policy updates, the Policy Insider hits your inbox each week on Friday afternoon. Be sure to keep an eye out for this email with important updates on what we're doing for you on Capitol Hill. We couldn't do what we do without the support of our teams across the organization. Volunteers are at the heart of CEC and what drives us forward. If you're interested in volunteering with CEC, be sure to complete your profile in our volunteer square. The link is located under the About Us tab on the homepage and then become a volunteer. Once you're in our volunteer square database, we'll be able to match you up with internal groups looking for volunteers with your skills and expertise. Another great tool to use is our partner resource directory. This listing of our partners will help you in your daily work with resources from online education to products, services, and more. Here you'll find a comprehensive listing of our partners that have invested in CEC and want to work more closely with our members. The directory is searchable and could be very helpful if you're interested in learning more about a variety of services. And then the last item to cover is more of a practical item, and that is just to ensure that CEC is listed as a safe sender. To receive CEC information, it's important to make sure that CEC is listed on your safe sender list. Doing this will prevent messages from CEC being moved to your spam or junk email folder. It's very important for us to be able to communicate information to you so that you can make the most of your membership. We have a web page with specific instructions on how to access this, through your preferred email provider. We also need your help taking this a step further. So it would be really helpful if you could please alert your school districts or universities to add CEC to your organization's list of safe senders so that we can help others receive valuable information from CEC as well. All right, and I'll go ahead and pause. It looks like we have a couple items in the chat. Okay, so it looks like Jenna did answer the question on division of research. And um, uh, the other question is, how would you define exceptional children? And um, I'll see if Jenna can maybe expand on that a little bit. Sure, so, and you know what? I'm, I want to, I don't want to misspeak. So I'm actually trying to find right now what our official um, definition is, but, um, within our mission, you know, it's, it's individuals with disabilities and or gifts or talents. Um, so I don't know, Jen, I see you're on the chat. Do you know of any other uh, definition? I don't. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> but you know what? I will, I'm going to ask our colleague, on our um, chat and I'm just gonna confirm to see if there's any others. Did you have any other questions about that? No, okay, thank you. All right, if there are no other questions, uh, we we appreciate you attending our webinar today. Uh, please be sure to watch out for a follow-up email from me asking about your experience. And then if you have any other questions, feel free to contact me or Jenneth or uh, our member services team at the information on your screen. Um, and we'll hang around for a few more minutes to answer any other questions that you might have um, or to demo how to access something. But if there aren't any other questions, then thank you again. And we hope you have a wonderful night.